You are listening to Radio Perkins. All right, good afternoon, everybody. This is Radio Perkins. This is DJ Sweet. And this is DJ Keys. A.K.A. Mike Daniels. And Zach Benny. It's great to be here this afternoon. We have two very special guests today, former employees of Perkins. This is Ken Duran and Dan Duran. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hi there. Hello. Hi. All right, well, I guess I'll start off with my question first. Um, I know that you guys do a lot of different types of music, um, but in your spare time, um, oh, I'm, so, I messed up. I'm sorry, I meant to say, I know that you guys do a lot of folk music, but in your spare time, do you listen to any other genres of music? Yeah, uh, sometimes I like to listen to classical, um, and uh, I like the Eagles and, uh, you know some of, some of the uh, tunes like that, but I I always gravitate back to my roots uh, of folk music. Cool. What is your musical background? Well, um, I uh, this is Ken, and I have um, a couple backgrounds. One is uh, I have a theater background, so I do do musical theater. I played Tevier and Fiddler on the Roof and Fagin and Oliver, uh, as well as straight. I've done some Shakespeare and stuff, so I have the. Uh, the, the musical theater background. Uh, I've taken some guitar lessons from a few different people. Um, but other than that, I'm not formally uh, cl classically trained, except when I was, oh, a young sprout uh, in oh, seven, eight, nine, I took piano. And Dan? Yeah, I took piano when I was younger. Um, I started out uh, um, taking formal pian piano lessons, and my teacher would get mad because I would play by ear. She <laughs> wanted me to play by the notes. Uh, and, and then as I got along, I decided to switch over to guitar because it, it, piano's awful heavy to carry around with you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I stuck with uh, the, the guitar for many, many years, and I'm actually getting back into doing a little bit of piano again just to get back to it. Nice, nice. All right, well, uh, my next question is... I know that you like, uh, I know that your song, um, what's it called? Shelter from the Storm. Yes, exactly. I'm sorry. I just blinked out there for a second. That's fine. Um, Shelter from the Storm. It's named after a Bob Dylan track. So was Bob Dylan an influence when you were uh, writing this at all? Actually, no. Really? Uh, um, I... Uh, wrote the song, you know what, this is the first I knew that this is a Bob Dylan track, that, that, that uh, Shelter from the Storm. Um, uh, I knew nothing about the fact that Bob Dylan had anything like that. Uh, so, no, he was not an influence. I uh, uh, just started working on some music and uh, liked the, the concept from the uh, group, Shelter from the Storm, and, and started writing. But wow. knew nothing about the Bob Dylan piece. Thanks for letting me know. I'll have to check that out. Hey, you're welcome. Okay. Um, um, how did the song Shelter from the Storm come about? Sorry about that. Well, Shelter from the Storm, we played a, a benefit uh, concert for a group that was trying to raise some money. And this, uh, this is a non-profit organization that... Uh, uh, provides uh, shelter for people who have lost their homes, who are basically homeless. And they put them up in, in an apartment and they help them get back on their feet within eight months. So I was listening and looking at their website to see what they, what they did and I got inspired by it. So I started one night around midnight just playing around with stuff and by, the, by an hour or so I had the chorus and the bare bones of the song. Uh, wow. uh, worked out. It took me another week, and then I played it for my uh, wife, uh, who works here at Perkins, uh, Mrs. Durand, and she said, you need to work on it. <laughs> so I went back, I reworked the uh, verses, and came up with the song as it is. Well, that's fantastic. And now, um, we are going to play for you a Shelter from a Storm. It's a great song, we all love it. And now, for your audience members, we are going to play Shelter from the Storm. Are you okay with that, Dan and Ken? Yeah, we we're, absolutely We're ready. We're ready. How about you, Morax? Mm -hmm. We're set then? Here we go. Started out to raise a family. Work my fingers to the bone Build every waking hour Trying to build a loving home Then they shut the factory down I lost 
lost my work, we lost our home. Never felt so helpless or alone. I needed shelter from the storm. Did not need forever a place to keep me warm with my dignity. A shelter from the storm Had a dream to raise a family A child to call my own There'd be someone to love us In a safe and peaceful home Then home became I needed shelter from the storm Did not need forever A place to keep me warm With my dignity intact A shelter from the storm After 50 years of working filled with pain but my wife and I are happy secure in what remains so how did we lose our savings and how did we lose our home never felt so helpless or alone I needed Shelter from the storm Did not need forever A place to keep me warm With my dignity intact A shelter from the storm To find people who are caring When you're lost all alone to provide a bridge from heartbreak back to living on your own I needed shelter from the storm did not need forever a place to keep me warm with my dignity a shelter from the storm A shelter from the storm A shelter from the storm All right, we're back. That was great, guys. Yeah, it and was. Great job. Great Thank job. you. Thank you very much. All right, I've got another question here. I noticed that your voices actually sound very similar especially when you were singing. Um, it must be very interesting singing as siblings. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, yeah. Um, actually, people have said that before. They said sometimes when they listen to us sing, we go back and forth. Sometimes I sing a verse and sometimes Ken does. And they're not sure if they're not watching. They don't know who's singing. Oh. But also, we even though we complement each other, I'm a little bit lower. My voice yeah. is just slightly lower. Dan's a little higher. So... He hits notes that I can't hit up there, but I hit notes that he can't hit down there. Right. So right. if we're doing a verse that has some low stuff, I might catch it. If it's high, he does. But then when he does those harmonies that he does, I, I can't touch some of those things, and he can. So we really complement well that way. Interesting, interesting. Who are your favorite musicians? Based on your love of folk music, is Burl Ives a role model to you too? Well, I remember Burl Ives. Uh, he, he, he always did the Christmas show. Uh, the Rudolph. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. But yeah. One of my favorite, really my favorite, if I had to pick one, I'd say it's James Taylor. Perfect. Yeah. And for me, one of my inspirations, I, I've got to say, was Pete Seeger. 
uh, Pete Seeger, uh, James Taylor, the amazing musicianship, I can see where Dan is, Pete Seeger, some of the uh, moral fortitude uh, has, has been an inspiration for me. Wow, really cool. Um, well, my last question for you guys today, uh, what did you do when you used to work at Perkins? Because I know you retired uh, a while back, but when you did work here, what did you used to do? Well, I've retired, says Ken, but Dan, what about you? What, what did you do here? Well, years ago, I was actually a phys ed teacher in an elementary school up in Keene, New Hampshire, and during the summers, I would come down here at work at Perkins um, as uh, a rec aide and um, nice. did, did things during the summer. And you also did the IMC? That's right. I, I actually did that for a year um, and did some computer work and videotaping and things like that. Yeah. And then I did... Uh, um, my first three years, I was a house parent back when we called uh, uh, the people house parents instead of coordin uh, oh, residential coordinators. That. You still call them house parents. <clears throat> I know. Most people do. And I did that for three years. And then for the next 35 years, I did staff training. So I taught new staff orientation, human rights issues, uh, um, safety issues, things of that nature, until I retired just this past, um, oh, month or so ago. Do you miss working at Perkins? You know, I miss the people. I miss being around everybody. I miss the excitement of that. But you know what? I love the guitar playing and the music. So though I miss the school, and I do miss the work, I always love my work. I also love the music that, it, that I'm allowed to do now because I have the time. Right. Well, I root for you, Ken, and Dan, you too. Thank you. Great job, guys. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Yes, it has. Oh, and by the way, fans out there, if you want to hear more of Ken and Dan, they're performing in Dwight Hall at 7 o'clock tonight. So please, if you live in the area, come on down. Great. So. Um, what was that song about the ocean? You were going to speed us off with one last song. The ocean. We're going to do one last song. Uh, the, the one you're thinking of, Wild Ocean, that's one of ours. Uh, but it's in an open tuning, and we don't have that ready yet. But the one that we had planned was about Laura Bridgman. Oh, sweet. Really? Yeah. Nice. Okay. We'll now, do the ocean one tonight, right? Yes, we are going to do the ocean one tonight. Wild Ocean about uh, the widow's walks up in the uh, Maine. Uh, and if you're not sure what a widow's walk is, we'll tell you that tonight. All right. Well. Okay. So Laura Bridgman. Laura Bridgman was the first deafblind person to ever get a successful formalized education. If not for her, Helen Keller might not have been around. And so, uh, being that I worked here and I had read about Laura and learned about Laura, I wrote a song about her, and that's going to be the last one we're going to play right now. Okay, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure, Weaver. A pleasure, thank you. Owen. Yes. Zach, one more thing. Remember? Radio Perkins um, thing? Oh, right. Um, and you have been listening to Radio Perkins. Possibility Radio. Laura Bridgman tried to find the love very deep within her heart. But it took some time before she even had a Someone came along with the key.
Me and Dr. Howe have started out a new day For deaf-blind people to see that they could grow If they could just find their key The doctor acted, acted, acted in a manner that seemed cruel. But through the strife, he chipped away to the lock upon the door and helped her to step through. Laura grew on that day. By leaps and bounds and found the joy of life She and Dr. Howe had started out a new day For deaf-blind people to see that they could grow If they could just find their key Laura and Dr. Howe Help them to be free. To Radio Perkins.